Speaking of weird, uh, bizarre. Meanwhile, election workers in seven battleground states uh, convened in Atlanta last week to, uh, you know, kind of hold each other's hands and get up to date on the latest technology and all that kind of thing. Um, and uh, the, the, the press showed up, the CBS Evening News showed up, and they, they questioned some of them. Uh, Gabriel Sterling is the chief operating officer for Georgia's Office of the Secretary of State and a Republican. And he said, I feel like it should be joy, you know, that there's an election coming up. He said, but there's some angst. He said, the biggest thing I worry about is the possibility of violence by people who lose. And he's talking, of course, about Donald Trump's people. Uh, Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, a Democrat, said, quote, we're daily receiving threats, whether it's through voicemails, emails, social media, or in person. She said uh, she is personally receiving threats and it is escalating. She adds, they are all rooted in lies and misinformation, which is always disappointing and sad, but at the same time, it's real. Uh, Republican Bill Gates, no, not that guy. Uh, this guy's the member of the Board of Supervisors for Arizona's Maricopa County. Uh, he's a Republican. He has openly spoken about the fact that he has had to go see a psychologist for therapy, for psychotherapy, because of the uh, PTSD, the, the trauma that he's experienced from these uh, Trump followers. He said, this has unfortunately become a way of life and we've invested as a board in metal detectors, in fencing and in cameras. I wish we didn't have to do this, but we do. Trump brought us this. You know, this was not America before Trump. Trump brought us this. In Philadelphia, the city commissioner, Seth, uh, excuse me, Steph, Seth Bluestein, a Republican, he said the window of time from when the polls close until the networks are able to call the police, uh, excuse me, the call the race is where that window of misinformation can spread. And that, that, refer that references or reflects or both, um, one of the biggest concerns that these people have is that, you know, they'll get the vote, they'll count the vote, they'll declare the vote, and if Trump loses, suddenly all hell breaks loose, just like when George Bush lost in 2000 down in Florida and, and Roger Stone was there um, with uh, Amy Coney Barrett and John Roberts and Brett Kavanaugh, you know, banging on the windows and saying, uh, stop the steal, stop the steal, right? That happened in 2000. And those three people who are now on the Supreme Court were lawyers for the George W. Bush effort in Florida to overturn the election. And they succeeded. Bush lost that election. He lost it by a half million votes nationally, and he lost the Electoral College vote when they did the recount in Florida. It was obvious. He, he lost the election. And yet, five Republicans on the Supreme Court made him president. And this is the fear that many of us have now, is that six Republicans on the Supreme Court, no matter what happens this year, will figure out a way to make Donald Trump president. The, the simplest way would be to find something wrong with the election someplace and say, you know, screw it, we're going to hand it to Congress. And in that case, under the 12th Amendment, each state gets one vote through their congressional delegation. And 27, I believe, states right now have congressional delegations that are controlled by Republicans. Might be 26, but whatever it is, it's more than 25, which is the 50% threshold, which means that that uh, if the election gets thrown to the House of Representatives, Donald Trump becomes president. And you, now you could say, oh, that'll never happen, but it has happened. Most recently it happened in 1872, in the Tilden, or 1876, excuse me, in the, in the uh, Tilden Hayes race. I believe it happened in the, uh, in the race that uh, made uh, John Quincy Adams president that Andrew Jackson lost, if I'm remembering my American history uh, from the 1830s correctly. Pretty sure I'm right. Uh, but uh, like, I, like I sometimes say, you know, double check that. I don't have the data right in front of me, so I can't, I'm just running from memory here. But it has happened before. And if it happens again, I, it, it'll be a real, you know, a real tragedy for this country and a real challenge for the survivability of our democracy, particularly if that's the way that it happens. If the Supreme Court, for the second time in 25 years, steals an election for a Republican.
if Republicans on the Supreme Court do that. And they certainly have the motive to do it. I mean, Clarence Thomas and Sam Alito are both in their mid-70s. Both of them want to retire from the, from the Supreme Court. They're making no bones about it. And just like Sandra Day O'Connor, I mean, in 2000, Sandra Day O'Connor told some House guests when, she, when the election returns were coming in and it looked like Al Gore was winning, she was really upset. And she told her House guests that she did not want to resign. Uh, she felt she needed to resign from the Supreme Court because her husband had just been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and she wanted to care for him. But she did not want to resign if, uh, if Al Gore was president because he would appoint her replacement. And that would change the name at that point point in time the court was five to four that would change the the partisan balance of the court and so she went along with uh, Rehnquist and, and Clarence Thomas and said uh, yeah let's steal the election on behalf of George Bush and there's a very real possibility this happens again so my thoughts on the election and what's going on right now, and uh, you know, we we this is this is by the way the solution, the the thing that would prevent that from happening, the thing that would prevent the Supreme Court from stealing the election again. The only reason that they were able to do it in 2000 was because George W. Bush, you know, after his brother knocked 90,000 African Americans off the voting rolls in Florida just before the election, that got George Bush within you know fewer than 600 votes. It was a it was a squeaker of an election. So, you know, the way, to, the way to do this right is to have a blowout of an election. And that is only going to happen if people take Taylor Swift's advice and register to vote, double check your vote. It's a three-step process. You have to register to vote and, and make sure that your registration is, is accurate, you know, that, that you're actually registered. A lot of people register to vote and then discover on voting day that the registration didn't work. It didn't stick somehow, some way, you know. So number one, register to vote and double check it. Number two, show up and vote. And number three, check and make sure your vote was counted. And do that within two days of the election because if you have to, quote, cure your ballot, if you have to show up in person because some Republican said that your signature doesn't match uh, you know, or they, or you have been challenged by a vigilante. This is now spread out of Georgia into a half a dozen other states. Um, then, uh, you know, your vote just doesn't get counted. So, you know, get on it. All three steps and tell everybody, you know, because we've got to win this thing and we've got to win it big. This is a big deal. All right, what's on your mind? I'll pick up your calls on the other side of the break. It's 15 minutes past the hour here on the Tom Hartman program, the place where smart people get their news. Stay with us. We'll be right back.